since we are recording it now, it's the sharing the slides. Thank so, you. Okay, welcome. So like, now we are recording. So you're seeing the first slide. This is the IU. IU means your knowledge. Eh? IU is your longevity and VEDA is the knowledge. That's where we start. And this is the picture we showed in the Chicago Surgical Science Museum. And this is about a surgery being done about 4,000 years back in India. It's a 5,000 years old, continuously practicing medicine. And Ayu means your longevity, Veda is the knowledge. And most important thing is the science of the art of self-healing. Once you understand Ayurveda, you will understand that this is a purely a self-healing. The source is Atharvaved. From Atharvaved came the Ayurveda. And many of your yogic and Ayurvedic words are being mentioned, even in the Rig Veda. In the Rig Veda has a mention about Pancha Mahabhuta, doshas. Some Veda, Jojur Veda has a Upasana, mantra, sacrificial rituals. Ayurveda is a holistic healing, very, very important. Right. Holistic means is whole and is written in Sanskrit. So remember one thing, Ayurveda yes. is yes. basically a, a preventive medicine. Mm. As I said, the chikitsa, the word means treatment, comes from another Sanskrit word called your badhi pratikar. Badhi pratikar means prevention of disease. Disease is a failure of Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic medicine, we call it a, it is an operating manual for your body. What does it mean? You buy a car, it comes with a operating manual. So you bring this body in this world, it comes with an operating manual. That operating manual is Ayurveda. Why? Because the whole Ayurveda practice is to keep you and guide you. So, The books, which are very, we have to look at it, which are very popular. One is called Charak Sanghita, which is called your medical books. Shushrut Sanghita is called surgical books. And all the three called Ashtanga, Ridayam, they all put it together. So these are the books. These are the called seven volumes of your Charak Sanghita. This is an English translation. And they're all available. These three are Shushut Sanghita, which is all the surgical techniques. Every surgical instrument you think about have been described in Shushut Sanghita. These are three big, all the three famous Ayurvedic books. See, in Shushut Sanghita, the surgery, he has described the surgical instruments. He has described the surgical instruments, your what we've been even using even today. It's amazing that Shushrut work with 125 surgical instruments and the familiar names like a lancet, scalpel, needle, catheters, all have been described. And in India at the time, what happened, people they're going to punish, they wish to cut the nose off. Shurponaka, you might know that. So. He used to do a call, take a tissue from his, from his called a forehead and turn it around and make a nose. And he's called the father of plastic surgery. In fact, Shushut is called the father of plastic surgery. In India, the Plastic Surgery Association is called the Shushut Association. And here also, we have a, all the Western medicine have accepted Shushrut as the first surgeon in this universe. We mentioned you yesterday, the three bodies, gross body, subtle body, causal body. We have five koshas, the sheets. We have seven chakras and we'll go over these chakras this afternoon after lunch. Basic concept of Ayurveda is a balance. 
The human being is called a microcosm and universe is called a macrocosm. And keeping them in balance is called Ayurveda. It's called Jatha Pindo Tatha Brahmand. And we have seen more and more, people understand, people always think that Ayurveda is, you know, you have these herbs, you know, you have these, you know, golis, and, you know, there's a puri. This is, Ayurveda is a philosophy. Ayurveda is a, is a dinocharya, daily routine. 50% of the Ayurvedic medicine is your dinocharya. 40% is your mind control. You see, yoga, pranayam, asana, pranayam, meditation, and maybe about 10%. And also remember, this product doesn't work until you understand what is prana, what is agni, what is your nadi. It's very, very important. So Ayurveda says our universe is made of five elements. Space, air, fire, water, earth, called Pancha Mahabhuta. In our body, we have space, we have in your stomach, and colon has a space. Air is the movement, movement of my heart, movement of my intestine. Fire is the transformation, my metabolic fire. I see my eyes. These are also my fire, which I see with my eyes. Water is the lubricant. It holds the tissue. Like if you if you put a dough, if you have a if you have a flower, if you put a water, the flower together it becomes a dough. So water holds it together. Earth is the framework, like your bone and you know, teeth. So a person who has a primarily has a main component of air and space is called vata. We call it the vayu. The main characteristic is the mobile. Mobility in the body and mind. And you will see people all the time, if people who cannot sit one place, they're always moving around, always talking. You know, they're doing 10 different things at the same time, 10 different projects. Pitta, on the other hand, has a component of fire. And there is a, they have a little bit of metabolic look, but looking at that, you know, but pittas are very organized, very careful. If you go to pitta house, you will know every book is in order. Every clothes is in a color coded. Every shoes are in order. Kapha, on the other hand, primary water and earth, they're very grounding and they really don't respond. If you go to a kapha house, the clothes are everywhere, the bones everywhere, every clothes. And I will give an example and you'll be amazed now how they look like. The water people are very thin because they have an energy which is called a catabolic energy. They're breaking down. And vata is our, you know, later part of our life. In the middle part of your life, sorry. Pitta is called mesomorphic. Like they're like a medium built. And kapha is called an endomorphic. So looking at a body type and body kind, we know. You can take a questionnaire. If you go to Patanjali your page, there is a questionnaire, and we answer the questionnaire, and you will be able to know what is your body type. You can go continuous to this question, and will come up, what is your body type? If you look at eyes, vata eye, pitta eye, and a kapha eye. By looking at the eyes, we can see the difference of the people's structure. Vata is a little crooked, the nose. You will see the nose is a little bent, a little crooked, that's a vata. A pitta nose has a little bit of a redness, sharpness. And a kapha nose will be broad. And by looking at somebody's face, somebody's eyes, you'll be able to make a diagnosis. There were different energies. Vata is called a catabolic, the bringing down. Pitta is a metabolic. Kapha is called the anabolic. It's building up. So when you have the baby, little baby, round, go, everything. So there. Kapha. Middle age is the pitta. Later age is your vata. And then when you see, if you see a very nice example, say, uh, 
So you were in the airport. You were in the airport and your flight you got cancelled. If some person is like, hey, when is my flight? What kind of should I go? And going around and talking to everybody. It's a butter. Next person goes and says, hey, when is my next flight? What time do you want me to come? What is my seat number? It's a pitta. Very organized, very controlling. Half on the other hand, a person sitting in a chair says, they call me before half an hour. They really don't give a care, they don't give a damn what is going on in their life. That's a kapata. If you send somebody email, you will get the reply right away. That's a vata, because the mind is very mobile. Pitta, if you send an email to Pitta, he will read every line, he will read every word, and then send a nasty email back. What is send a nasty email back? I'm Pitta, I'm the king. You know, who are you talking to me? In a kapha, you send one email, it's a two email, it's a three email, doesn't matter. They never, they never respond even. What is responsible for all the movements? Pitta maintains digestion and the heat, and kapha maintains the material structure and stability of our body. What our main site is in the colon. So in the colon, when the vibe, and pitta main site is a small intestine, and kapha main site is your stomach and the lung. So what it tells you that, that you need to do a practice, yoga practice, how to do the balances. So in a vata, they're very mobile. And all the practices below your belly button, grounding poses, Padmasana, Ardha Padmasana, Sukhasana, your Vajrasana, all grounding poses are from the bottom. Pitta moves very quickly, Jack and Dupan, and they're very, they're very organized. So if you tell the Pitta that always look inside within your body when you do it. If you ask a Pitta to do a, a tree pose, Vrikhasana, they will do a lot better than you because they're very well controlled and the mind is very focused. Kapha is seated back. So you, Kapha needs a uplifting asana. The uplifting asanas are very important. Vata needs a grounding asanas. Kapha needs a uplifting asanas. Pitta needs a cooling asanas. Vata needs alternate nostril breathing to balance. Pitta needs a cooling, like sitali pranayam, sitkari pranayam. And kapha needs your kapalbhati pranayam and bastrika pranayam. There are two terms you need to understand and need to remember, prakriti and vikriti. You are born with a certain percentage of your vata, pitta, and kapha. Those are called doshas. We all have all the three. But one is very prominent, sometimes two is very prominent, and do with a pulse diagnosis. And I'll show it to you how to do the pulse diagnosis. The combination is called a prakriti, which are born. But by exposing ourselves to this nature, remember there was a balance between macrocosm and microcosm. The balance goes away, and we end up with all the this is, remember disease, D-I-S, space E-A-S-E, -E. and the altered, your doshas are called vikruti. So these are the terms, and there is no English translation for this term. So when you see this prakriti, prakriti will be generally, it's your vata, pitta, and kapha, and it will give a number. It say, we'll, we'll do a pulse diagnosis, say three vata, two pitta, one kapha. Or three pitta, two vata, one kapha. Or three kapha, two vita, one kapha. They're called prakriti. And this is the difference for prakriti and vikriti. This is, I know somebody sent it to be called a Michelangelo's David here. Well, after three months visit to United States, this thing happened to him. 
This is our Prakriti was born with, this is our Vikruti. How to understand your Prakriti? You know, this is a very interesting, as I call the art of self-healing, why? You can close your eyes and drink a little bit of water. And also remember our whole daytime and our, your seasons, they're all also in balance with butter, pita, and kapha. Morning, it's in the four hours. Morning, six to 10 is a kapha time. 10 to two is a pitta time. Pitta time is the one which is, we have called call it agni, digestive fire. And that's the time we say your main meal has to be lunch. Again, two to six in the evening is a vata time. And you really don't, you don't know, know how to balance your daily life. It's called a dinocharya, daily routine. Evening again, six to 10 is a kapha time. Your digestive fire is very low. That's what is the dinner is very small. So when you close your eyes, if you drink a little bit of the water and think what the taste is, if it is a bitter taste, it is your butter. If it is a little bit of a sour, it's a pitta. If it is sweet, it is kapha. Reason is we have a sixth taste. We call it astringent, bitter, pungent, salty, sour, sweet. Astringent, bitter, pungent is with butter and your salty, sour, sweet is with a kapha. It's very important, this thing. And once you start doing it, you will understand. Next one is called the attributes of the gunas. If you understand the attributes, the Ayurveda says we have about 20 opposing attributes. It's called a subtle and gross, sukshma and sthulu, soft and hard, slow and dull and sharp, static and mobile. What it does, hot and cold, heavy and light. Vata is very light. Vata is very dry. Vata is very mobile. So you have to do all the practices, yoga practices, doing opposite of this. They have to be the grounding. They have to do something which is oily. And pitta is very hot, very sharp. So they have to do a cooling practices. Kapha is very soft, very dull, very static. They need to do uplifting practices. And that's the way you balance with that. There are three terms you also need to know about your mind. The mind has what is called your Gunas, Maha Gunas. Satta, Rajas, and Tamas. Satta is the purity of your mind, which is related to your Vata. Rajas is your activity of your mind, which is related to your Pitta. Tamas is the inertia of your mind, which is related to your Kapha. If you look at the people who have, see, the vata, pitta, and kapha, the common, so vata is very dry. If you see the vata skin, we put the oil, oil goes away right away. So we put the oil, oil is the balancing your vata. So if you're eating some food, oily food is for vata. So if you're eating, say, popcorn, then you're going to put a little butter in it or oil in it, that will be vata. For pitta, opposing was be cool. In all the cooling practices, so the Chandra Namaskar, Sitali Pranayam, cooling food, and Kapha is heavy, opposite will be light. Light will be just, you know, say upward mountain pose, Uttito Tadasana, or doing it, your Brikasana, all the uplifting and light food. What Ayurveda does is called the law of opposite. Like what did our body always get? Body always get attracted to your basic qualities. Butter will always try to eat some dry food. Butter will always be a little mobile. So a law of opposite is a practice. You will ask the butter to ground down. You will ask the butter to do the oily practice, oily food. Very, very important for the balance. 
Next time with the concept is our body is made of seven tissues called dhatus. Rasha dhatu is plasma, rakta dhatu is red blood cell, mamsa dhatu is a muscles, peta dhatu is a fat, osti dhatu is a bone and cartilage, majja dhatu is a nervous tissue, shukra dhatu is your reproductive tissue, and after that it forms a substance called ogens. So when the food is properly digested, which is digested because of your parasympathetic activation. The food goes through all the seven tissues and generally it takes about four to five days for each tissue to be converted. And this is the whole Ayurvedic principle and behind that. And all is done through Agni, is called the Jathar Agni. So in the seven dhatus, seven layers, it generally takes about 35 days to form the ojas after you eat. When the oja is formed, this is your immunity. So you're talking about the how to fight even your exogenous disease. Somebody asked me yesterday, when you form the ojas, you find the exogenous disease. The digestive fire, which is called agni, which is called a jathar agni. Jathar is your stomach. Jathar agni gets ignited with your practices. Like your Kapal Bhati Pranayama, like your Udhyani Band, like your Agni Sarkriya. When your Jathar Agni is good, functioning Agni, you have a, the food is properly digested, you have a clear tongue, you have a fragrance, you have a very clarity in your body and mind. But when the Agni is not good, Food is not properly digested. It forms a toxin, which is called a ama. Ama is the root cause for all the imbalances and disease we have. We've got a coated tongue. We get a foul smell. We very lethargic. Somebody asked me when you feel lethargic. Yes, when you eat a lot of food and food is not properly digested, you feel a little bit of heaviness in your body and mind. Lightness in the body and mind is proper digestion. The health is a balance of your prana, teja, and ojas. Prana is a life force, which is called a cellular communication. Tejas is called a cellular intelligence, it's a pitta. And ojas is a cellular immunity, which is a kapha. Regarding the diet, which everybody asks me, what is, what is your diet should be? Ayurveda says that food has to be pure, fresh, organic, and seasonal. Ayurvedic medicine says we are what we digest. We have a very common term in West, we are what we eat. No, I mean, if you, if you talk about the food, look at all the people are eating all over the world. Germans, yeah, they're eating sauerkraut and sausage all the time. Look at what the Russians eat. Look at what the Chinese eat. Now you come and tell me, oh yes, you know, you have to have a, a, a vegetarian meal, vegetarian food that is good health for you. Maybe, but if you look all over the world, what happened, they are in a state of mind which they can digest, whatever they eat. You know, I've seen some, some Nepalis, Sherpas, I've seen. They only eat yak meat and yak milk and yak butter. No veggies, no rice, nothing. That as healthy as can be. So, and it's a famous statement. If the diet is wrong, then medicines are of no use. If the diet is right, there is no need for any medicine. Food is a medicine. There are six tastes Ayurveda talks about is called your astringent, well, kashya, bitter. Kashya is where you put something, mouth constricts. Bitter is the tikta, pungent, pungent is your, like your uh, chili. Chili when you put heat, salty, sour, sweet. Now, you know, each one taste has a potential. Like when you put a chili in your mouth, sometimes people are not used to, they will have a perspiration, the heat, all the heat will be coming out from their, from their head. A tongue 
responds to all the taste. When you put a food in their tongue, tongue doesn't know whether it is a protein, fat, or carbohydrate. Only thing tongue knows, you know, the your taste. And based on the taste, it starts the digestive process. And this is the way when you look at the tongue, the whole body is represented in the tongue. Astringent, bitter, pungent is related to your vata. And salty, sour, sweet is associated with your kapha. And pungent, salty, sour is associated with pitta. So what does it mean? People who are with the vata, they will be eating opposite. They will be eating salty, sour, and sweet. And people of kapha, they will be eating astringent, bitter, pungent. But when you look at our nature, we do completely opposite. Butter people keeps on eating bitter food. Kapha people keeps on eating a sweet food. So you need to train them how to do the opposite. And each, each taste has a, your quality. Astringent is very drying. It's called a wound healing. Salty is very laxative. You know, and then your, the, Oh, no, rest of the, but again, you know, every taste, like when you get a sweet, sweet is very calming, cooling. And this gunas, the food in, in Ayurveda, the food is regarded as your mind. Food is not regarded as your body. So what happened, the food, food is used as a called jatha an tatha man. That means whatever you're eating, you're creating your mind. So the food, we call it a sattic food, rajasic food, tamasic food. With the food and all the information you have, what it does, we call it a, we whole day is called a dinochari, daily routine, and the seasons are called your Ritucharya. So seasons, if you can think about, summer is a pitta. Fall is a vata. Spring and winter is a kapha. So in also in a daily routine, if you look at a daytime, a morning six to 10 is a kapha time. In a kapha time, your digestive fire is very low. So remember we talked about yesterday, in Ayurveda, breakfast is very little. In fact, if you want to eat a breakfast, they ask you to go to breakfast past 9, 9.30, close to the pitta time. Because in a pitta time, your digestive fire is very strong. That is your 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's the time it says your main meal has to be the lunch. And in a vata time, 2 to 6, vata time, your digestive fire is very irregular. So you are very careful. You are doing a grounding practices. That's the time you do you know, exercise. In the evening, same thing comes back. In the early evening is a kapha time. That means your, your digestive fire is very low. So your dinner is very small. And in the night, 10 to 2 is a pitta time. At the time your digestive fire, what it does, body tries to clean all the junk we put in, in our body. It's like a self-cleaning oven. So if you think about it, morning and early evening is a kapha time. Midday and a midnight is a pitta time. And dawn and dusk is your butter time. And you balance your life according to that. Stages of our life, young age is a kapha, middle age is a pitta. Seniors are called vata. So seniors will be practicing more of the grounding poses. So, and also based on your body type, you do those poses. So we talk about the food. We, Basically, what we do, we, we eat too much. 
I have been living with a lot of staying with the Ayurveda I've seen. They will eat basically literally one meal a day in the lunchtime. And you know, there, little khichdi and little bit of a veggie and that's it. Maybe at the dinner time, they will eat a little bit of a fruit. One very important Ayurvedic concept is do not eat fruit with your any meal. Fruit has a quality. What it does, it prevents the absorption of trace elements. And fruit has a, some enzyme which interferes with your metabolic process. So Ayurveda says you eat all the seven coloring fruits, but eat fruit as a snack in the afternoon. Or if you have to eat food before, eat fruits before your main meal. Stomach, most important thing is stomach should be one third full, one third water and one third empty. So stomach, you have to give some space so that it can turn, churn, and it becomes like, like a washing machine. Never drink a ice cold water before a meal. Because when you put the food in your stomach, your stomach is also like a, your oven. It, food needs to be cooked. And if you don't get all the ice cold water, you shut down your agni. You do not, you do not like to drink too much water with your food. Just drink a little bit. And the reason is it will your dilute all the enzymes in your in your in your stomach. Because you need the enzymes to digest your food. So the Ayurveda recommends that after a main meal, drink water, glass of water, about an hour after a main meal. And we do it all the time. Like yesterday also. Yeah. So we'll have a lunch. After an hour, I will do it. Ayurveda diagnosis done called Ashtabhidda Parikha. That means eight limbs of the diagnosis. First diagnosis is called a pulse. And I'll show it to you how the pulse diagnosis is done. Then you look at the tongue, and if you go to any Ayurved person, that's what they will do. Feed your pulse, look at the tongue, voice, speech, vision, skin. So then let's look at the main, main one. It's called a pulse. Generally, we feel a pulse with our one hand. Ayurveda feels a pulse with three fingers. So you put a pulse with three fingers, and you do in the both right wrist and the left wrist. But also primarily when there's a female, we try to do the left wrist first and the male with the right wrist. After index finger is called the vata, middle finger is pitta, the kapha. Then there's a characteristic of the pulse. The characteristic of the pulse is the vata is called the sharponari. It feels like there's a snake under your finger. Pitta is called mandupnari. Mundukhnari is called your, like a frog. It's like a jump. It's like a jumping in your finger, you know? And it takes a little time to practice. And kapha is like a swan, very calm and cooling. And that is your vikriti. Vikriti means when I'm doing the pulse diagnosis, I'm finding what is the state of my vata, pitta, and kapha. I generally, I block the circulation. Then I let it go. And then when I feel it, that is my prakriti. What the Ayurveda does, they want to convert your prakriti to a vikriti. Ayurvedas are so, so proficient in a pulse diagnosis. With a pulse diagnosis, they can tell you that what is the alteration you have in different organ systems. It is a very extensive science. And I have done it, and we have done it. It's very, very important and very interesting to look at. You look at the tongue. You look at the tongue. This is the way body is laid in the tongue. Head here, heart here, stomach, as if the body is laying on your, on your tongue. So when you have the disease, you have a little coating of the tongue. This is the area of the kidneys. And the kidney problem, this is the colon. You get a little colon problem. Very important when you keep on doing it and we do it all the time and we find it out how beautifully 
all of our dishes of daddy. Finally, end with this. It's called a pancha karma. So if you go to India anytime, if you like, you get a pancha karma. Pancha means five. Karma is your action. Five actions which are used to do your cleansing in your body. And main one is one is called a vaman, which is primarily for your <coughs> kapha people. Virachan is called a purgation for the pitta people. Basti, medicated enema, is your for your vata people. Nasya, primary for kapha. Rakta moksha is for your pitta. Generally, a, a blood letting, you know, if you want to give a blood, is very, very important and, and very therapeutic from your. What happened here? I know this is a, at, at a certain time when you go over with it, it feels like very esoteric for all of you. But believe me, if you keep reading a little bit, and then if you want to feel within yourself, it is a very experiential, called the art of self-healing. It's a wonderful, wonderful practice. And as a yogi or yoga teacher, yoga practitioner, once you understand this dinocharya, ritucharya, and all the food, what to eat, what not to eat, it's not the food, it's your the digestive fire. Agni. See, there are terms. Ayurveda says, rogi, rogi, nirogi, and yogi. Rogi has your patho. Patho means diet. Rogi has a diet. Nirogi, nirogi has the daily routine. Daily routine is called dinocharya. And yogi, yogi has the agni. Yogi has the jathar agni. So, it's coming towards 12 o'clock. Let me finish it here and let me see what you have a lot of questions are here and I will try to answer a few of them. Uh, let's see what a yoga therapy, Ayurveda, Western medicine. Thank you. Thanks for showing Chandra Namaskar. The first time I heard the name even. Uh, you can go to my uh, YouTube channel you go to YouTube, put a Dilip Sarkar Yoga come up, and I have a lot of Chandra Namaskar there as a practice. In fact, I have done one a uh, couple of weeks back. Chandra Namaskar, it should be there. Could you please repeat Moon Salutation again? Uh, I can repeat about 10 times. It's not going to make any difference because you need to do it on your yourself. And if you under the guidance, it is all over. I can give it to you all the moon salutation. Moon salutation is not very popular in the West, but it's, it's getting very popular in India. Can mudras be done anytime or always with the Kapalbhati? It is done both, but I prefer with the Kapalbhati Pranayam because Kapalbhati Pranayam, what has happened? When you do mudras, when you get, you get a two is better than one. It's called synergistic. You get a very synergistic effect. Uh, should fruit be eaten before or after meal? Generally, it is before the meal because the fruit has a two enzymes. One is called the intestinal glycoprotein, which interferes with the absorption of trace elements. And it also has a called a cytochrome P450. Cytochrome P450 acts in the liver and it alters our metabolic process. It is best, like as we do, I do it all the time. I would all the seven coloring fruits, I will do in the afternoon as a snack instead. Uh, is blood donation helpful? Very much, especially for pitta people and especially for the women. Women has a very less pitta disease because, because of the monthly period. In the monthly period, they lose the blood. Very important is a blood donation. Can you get details about Vivekananda University. Yes, you can go to the online. Got Vivekananda. Vayu, v a y u dot o r g, and you get all the information. And yes, they're the first one outside India. 
which has a university status, they're in the California. They worked for almost four years to get the university status, and they're all doing very well. The first course, they get almost 30 students, and out of which about four are physicians, lawyers, and very, very I mean, experienced yoga teachers have joined as a 21 month course, Masters in Yoga. I would like to know about the university too. Please visit their website, Vayu, V A Y U, Vayu.org. Vayu stands for Vivekananda Yoga University.org. Uh, how about drink? Okay, that is good. Uh, Little alcohol is recommended in yoga practice. Yeah, alcohol is called a somaros. Alcohol has a, a tremendous, in fact, you know, alcohol works in the same place where all of our yeah, practice of yoga works. It's called a limbic system, hypothalamic pituitary system. But what happens when we tell you that if inch is better, then you take a foot out of it. So all of our rishis, if you know, uh, they always drink a little bit. In fact, a karana, you know, the, the, the somaras, you know, a lot of Ayurvedic products, the main component is your uh, little bit of a fermented, fermented grapes. Uh, Vayu.org, yeah, beautiful. Please refer to this. Uh, thank you, Aman. Any diet suggestion for high cholesterol? Absolutely no suggestion for your, for your disease in the diet. What is the suggestion is that first, if you want to do any kind of dieting, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I don't get any answer from anybody. Shift your main meal to the lunch. The moment you shift your main meal to the lunch, every, your food will be digested. Cholesterol is nothing but an undigested food. Cholesterol is an ama. When the food get digested into sapto dhatu, rasa dhatu, rakta dhatu, mamsa dhatu, mero dhatu, posti dhatu, majja dhatu, shukra dhatu, there is no toxic material. The toxic materials when they are digested is your high sugar high cholesterol, high uric acid, everything high is due to your lack of digestive fire. And the lack of digestive fire, so first you transfer your main meal to the lunch, and then if you have a dinner, small dinner, which is about half of your lunchtime, about three to four hours before going to bed, what happens, especially in India, I call in India, I said, oh, 11 o'clock at night, they will have a dinner, and after dinner, they go to bed. Big meal, think about that. When you're sleeping, your body is not working, that food is not getting digested, that food becomes high cholesterol, that food becomes high sugar, that food becomes a toxic for your whole life. So what we need to do as a yoga practitioner we can talk about food all the time, called biruddha ahar. We know what is the incompatible food. It can go on and on and on. Cut down the portion size. Listen to the sign of digestion. What a sign of digestion? First sign of digestion is a lightness in your body and mind. You eat a meal, you feel heavy, that food is not digested. Lightness your body and mind. Second, Appropriate hunger and thirst. When you eat, you will have a hunger and thirst in three to four hours, in six hours. Appropriate natural urges. All of your natural urges, coughing, sneezing, passing water. Well, see, for us, I wake up in the morning, sit down in a malasana, drink a glass of water. I had a beautiful bowel movement. I feel great for the whole day. It is basically, you know that how the food is getting digested. If your food is not properly digested, what happens? You get a smell in your excreta. 
That means your stool will smell, your urine will smell, your perspiration will smell. So people say, you know, I'm smelling, you know, I'm smelling, you're smelling because the food is not become part of your body. It becomes your mala. Uh, is Vayu affiliated with SBS or Bangalore? Yes, SBS or Bangalore is actually the Vayu is our, the American extension of SBS in Bangalore. In fact, SBS is the center who gave me the highest yoga degree in the world. You know, it's called the Doctor of Letters. You will see in my name, Doctor of Letters is above your PhD. So uh, 2018, they offered me and gave me honorary Doctor of Letters. So it's already passed about almost three minutes. We have a couple of more minutes before you take a lunch break. If you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask. I have answered most of them on the chat room. I Any other question? questions? Yes. Yes, go ahead. I was asking about uh, hip pain. What, what? Awesome. Hip pain. Hip, hip pain. Remember, all the joint pain is due to tightness. tightness. So you need to do a, yeah, you need to do a little relaxation and in stages. For the hip pain, best asana is your Baddha Konasan, which is called a Titli Asan. You can sit down, put it there. But again, remember, you don't do one asan for a one disease. For if you have a hip pain, you do a, your simple relaxation of your hands, shoulder, neck, body. And then the asan, which is more appropriate for the condition, you do it a little longer, a little better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also, a lot of other hips, like you put your one foot, I think I showed you yesterday, you put your one leg in the top, take your knees out and drop your knees and hips on the ground. But Baddha Kunasan, closed angle, and which is also called your butterfly, Titli Asan. Very slowly, along with your breathing. What else? That's it. Thank you. Well, is that... This is Kim. Um, what about after hip surgery? Well, like two years after. It's amazing. You'll be surprised. You know, I have people who had a total hip replacement, total day replacement, and they do absolutely normal with yoga practices. You know, a total joints after surgery, you develop a scar tissue. Healing is a scar tissue. A scar tissue is very tight. We have a, a lady in our class who has a, both the knee replaced. Kim, you'll be surprised. She can even sit down in a squatting pose and can get up. So what we say, there is no contraindication even for total hip replacement, total knee replacement. What contraindication is listening to your body? If your body is allow you, keep doing it slowly and slowly. Do not do a yoga practice after taking a pain medication because pain tells you how to guide yourself and listen to your breath and signal. All the people ask me this contraindication. I said, if there is a contraindication, the type of disease we have, we won't be able to do any yoga practice. I have, I had open heart surgery. I had a serious cervical radiculopathy, a serious your back. My back was completely almost solid. But again, slowly and slowly, I overcome everything. So answering to you, Kim, yes, you don't do it very slowly, Absolutely. gradually in stages. I have a question. This is Alka. Yes, if, go ahead. I'm looking for a pressure point, like if you have injured your right thumb and that this area, and I have gotten a steroid shots, is there a pressure point that can slowly heal with that also? Generally, it's a pain, you know, go to the back and slowly do in the back and do a pressure point. It, it does, but really, primarily, you will do your Adhi Mudra. Adhi Mudra is the all which will take care of your thumb and the hand issue. We yeah. learn from the babies, you know, the babies, babies don't have any pain in their hand. You know, the, every infant from your day one will close the hand like this. They will scream and yell. This, this opens up in the upper part of the lung. So do this called Adhi Mudra or Balo Mushti Mudra for your hand. Thank you. 
Okay, time for a lunch. Then you come back at one o'clock, huh? I think Shekhar will start, then I'll come back around two o'clock. Great, uh, great presentation, and we'll see everybody at uh, one o'clock. Okay. Have a, have a, like lunch, remember? Lunch, lunch, main meal. Stop recording now.